yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Good morning. Mount Members Church wants to say good morning to our newcomers and our online family that might be watching today. We're launching a new series, and we want to say Happy Mother's Day, wherever you may be. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to have a great time. We've got some special treats in store for this new series that we're doing this morning. It's going to be really, really cool. And I just want to say God's Word is powerful. God's Word is life-changing. God's presence is drawing. And there's a reason why you're here this morning. That reason is God has something for you. And I'm really excited, really excited to watch you guys walk out these doors today, encouraged, inspired, motivated, to just take that one step closer to living life the way God has dreamed for your life to be. Your best days are ahead. It's really awesome what God has in store. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray over the Word. We've got a great message for you today. If you bow your heads and join me. Father, we're so grateful this morning for your presence. Thankful for your people who are so awesome. Thankful, God, for your word that is powerful. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would speak to our hearts, you would inspire us and encourage us to be more like Jesus Christ. We love you this morning. We thank you in advance for the great things that are to come. In Jesus' name, everybody said? Amen. Amen. How many of you guys like to eat? Woo! Yeah. I mean, seriously. Some more than others. Some more than others. Um, you know, I'm very thankful, all right, seriously, that God has given me a high metabolism because I love... We I mean, all hate you I know. because of that. Amen. But, you know, seeing people... <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> That's what we get right now. I know, but, but skinny people have to deal with high cholesterol and, and blood pressure and heart issues, right? We still have to take care of our bodies, but I love food. I absolutely love food, all right? I mean, it doesn't matter what kind of food, I love it. I love all kinds of food. I like Chinese, I like Cantonese, I, uh, whatever that is. I, I don't like Cantonese. Maybe that's a language. Is that a language? Is that Asian? I don't know what that is. I like barbecue. How many barbecue connoisseurs do we have in the house? Yeah. Not nearly enough, because barbecue is way more awesome than that. Uh, I like country cooking. I like grandma's cooking. <laughs> what is your problem? Grandma's can cook. Now, my mom is a grandma, and she is a wonderful cook. I mean, seriously, she's a great cook. But there was moments where she had time management challenges when I was a child. She liked to multitask, and she's not very good at it. Um, <laughs> Hey, we just have to keep it real. You got it? I know it is Mother's Day. I know. You know, I wasn't really inviting interaction and engagement from the congregation this morning. But mom, wherever you are, happy Mother's Day. I love you so much. So back to my story. So she um, had the habit of beginning a project on the stove, which would have been my dinner, and she would many times forget the project or the task at hand, and she would walk away. And many times it would result and dinner being burned. And, but she's a great cook. If she can focus and finish, she is an awesome, awesome cook. But it got to the point to where she'd open the, the oven and smoke would roll out and I'd say, Dad, dinner's ready. <laughs> Pretty bad. So one, one Wednesday night, we were scurrying around, getting ready to head out the door to go to church. And she said, she's like, get ready. She's in the bathroom. She said, honey, um, dinner's on the stove. Go help yourself. So I went and got me some soup and sucked that soup down as quick as I could before we jumped in the car. We're on our way to church and I'm not feeling too good. And that soup was, to be honest with you, like, it was pretty gross. It was disgusting. <laughs> and I said, I said, Mom, I said, like, I've, you've cooked good stuff before, but that soup was really gross. And she said, soup, what are you talking about? Soup. <laughs> I said, the soup that was on the stove. She said, there wasn't anything on the stove but gravy. She said dinner was in the oven. Soup, there was no soup. There was just, it was brown, it was gray. Gray's supposed to be brown, first of all. Let's take that. First of all. Secondly, it was gray gravy, and I thought it was soup. And I thought it was a little spicy, a little odd, but I found a whole entire bowl of gravy. <laughs> She's like, in the, in, the, in the oven was like chicken fried steak. But hold on, in your mother's defense, let me ask you a question, okay? Once you took the first bite, why did you continue? I was hungry. I love yeah, food. Exactly. So, Anybody else in the room would have taken a bite and been like, Mom, is that what's for dinner? And she'd have told you it was in the oven. But 
so this is my story. So, so I love, love, love food. Misty loves food. She's very boring. She's very. She just finds one thing. She loves it. She just does it every time. Why mess with it? You know what? The best is you don't mess with it. It's my story. Mexican food. She loves Mexican food, but she doesn't. She eats at the same restaurant every time and gets the same thing. She's boring. So. But, you know, we, I, any, I haven't eaten Chinese since we got married because she won't let me venture out and get, well, I might be lying a little bit, but twice. <laughs> okay, so, I have twice. So, like when she was out of town or something, I don't know when that was, but I love food, guys, seriously. Like, I love it. And so, um, how many of you guys love food? Restaurants? All right, on the count of three, I want to know your favorite restaurant. On the count of three, I want you to yell it loud and proud. On the count of three, one, two, three, favorite restaurants. <laughs> If you all talk at the same time, we can't. All I heard was rhythmic, rhythmic something, Rancho. You know what? I know that some of you guys like to We should eat there. Rhythmic Rancho. That's awesome. It's got rhythm and Rancho food, right? You would love it. Yes. Well, we know that some of you guys love food because we stopped your Facebook pages. If yeah, you all we've been checking you out. So right? Let, so let's I, see. Let's just see. Let's see who really likes food. Who here. likes food? Oh. oh. Food, the family, it's so nice. Sweet. Let's see who else enjoys. Oh, there's that is a red crowd right there. That's our intern. Okay, cool. Who else? Ah! <laughs> I'm pretty sure that this was at Rancho. I'm pretty sure it's her husband. It was just mouthing me a second ago. Awesome. There you are. There she is again. There she is. Some of you guys are not. You're not even any fun. Like I stopped your pages and you didn't have yeah. your your picture. Honestly, you need to get out. You need to get out. Right? You guys are boring. So I'm Traveled the world and been to some of the world's finest restaurants on the planet, right? We're talking some five star stuff. I remember we were vacationing, or probably a ministry trip, because we don't really vacation too much. We need to get out more, not be so much workaholics, you know? So we were, I was thinking that, what's that show, Triple D? It's drive ins, diners, and dives. You guys seen that show? It's pretty awesome. And so I was thinking, we got online, we're like looking up these places. We were talking about this the other day, weren't we? Sure. Yes. And so it's pretty cool. I like seeing all the pinpointed restaurant spots. And there's a lot of great restaurants out there that that dude is eating at. And that food looks awesome, does it not? Yes. There's a lot of great food that you can eat. But I'm telling you today, right now, listen up. There is no, no food that comes anything close to being nearly as good as the food that is served from the local church, and that is at the table, and the food is Jesus Christ, right? That is the greatest food we will ever eat in our entire lives, no matter how good Grandma's cooking was. I want to show you the scripture this morning. Misty's going to take us through this really awesome scripture that kind of capitalizes on this idea. Before I read this, this is, we're going to go to John chapter 6. If you have your Bible and you want to go there, or you want to look it up on your phone, or you can just read it on the screen, but... In this passage in John 6, there's a cool story that maybe you've heard of, and it was Jesus feeding the 5,000. You guys ever heard of that story? Some of you guys, if you haven't, look it up. Go to John 6 um, after service and look it up. It's awesome. But literally, Jesus goes out, and there's this crowd of people that's following him around because he's doing all these incredible miracles, right? And they are stalking him. Everywhere he goes, there's just this crowd of people. Now, I want you to imagine 5,000. Does anybody know what? Our town in Grove, like I'm saying it that way because we're kind of outside of town. Well, what is the population of Grove? Does anybody know? 6,000. It's a little bit over. When I came here, when Brendan came here, it was 5 something. We were like, woo, we gotta call this this major city, right? There's like 5,000 people in the city limits. Now, we, we get a range of the masses around that, but I want you to think if we took all the people in Grove, so even say 6,000. 
yourselves, right? Because what y'all not telling you is that that was only men. So most men probably had a wife and at least one kid. So what's five times three? Oh wait, I got this. Fifteen. One of the seniors should have got it. Fifteen thousand people. At least fifteen thousand people were there that day. At least. All right. And here's what happened. Imagine fifteen thousand from Grove. Jesus shows up in Grove, Oklahoma, and fifteen thousand people on foot are following him all over Grand Lake. That would turn some heads, right? Well, these people did not want to miss the miracles that were happening. So you know what they did? They were just not eating. They were just following him around, not even eating, and they were getting hungry. And the disciples came to Jesus and they said, Hey, these people are getting hungry. Like, where are we going to get food? And Jesus said, You tell me where you're going to get some food. Like, how are you going to feed these people? And they said, We would have to work like a year to make enough money to go and buy food for all these people. And at the same time, there's no grocery stores and there's definitely no restaurants around. And so Jesus said, so what do you have to work with? And one of his disciples comes up and he's like, hey, there's this little boy and he's got his cool little lunchbox. He's got like Ninja Turtles on it, right? And he brings it up and he said, look, there's some bread and fish. And you're all like, hmm, that's yummy, bread and fish. And Jesus says, bring it to me. And I can just imagine that he just pulled out a log or something, right? Over to the chair. And he says, bring it to me. And where do they get the baskets? Who knows, right? Just miraculous. These baskets appear. He starts breaking bread and breaking fish and putting it into baskets. And the disciples, they grab up the baskets. And you know what they do with it? They serve the people. 15,000 people at least. And they said that after everyone had eaten, there were 12 full baskets left. That's what I call an incredible miracle. When Jesus fed the 5,000, it's right after that, that Jesus began to explain to people, look, the kind of food you need is something that's going to sustain you more than what you have at your own dinner table at home. The kind of food that you need is something that's going to help you every day of your life. It's going to help you for all the rest of your life and for all eternity. And that kind of food is the bread of life. I want you to look at this passage in John chapter 6 and 35. It says this. Jesus replied, I am the bread of life. Say bread of life. Bread of life. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. Never be hungry again. I don't know how many of you guys join in on our three day of fasting. We fasted from Wednesday to Saturday. But if you did, you know what it means to be hungry. And Jesus says, you're never going to have to be hungry again ever. Because whoever believes in me will never be hungry or be thirsty. Jesus is the bread of life. He goes on to say, go to that next verse we get. Is there another one? Or not. Right there. <laughs> It's in there somewhere. I don't know. I've gone off the screen. But here's the deal, guys. When you come to church, I want you to imagine that you're coming to the table. At our house, when I call dinner, we don't sit in front of the TV unless the table's covered in taxes. That happens so recently, <laughs> right? Like, I was like, don't you touch the paperwork. Where are you that's, going that's very real. But we call them. Let's go, everybody, to the table. We come to the table. We sit down as a family. When you come to church, you're coming to sit down at the table. And you're coming to be fed. And guess who your chefs are? The one and only. Wow. Your pastors are your chefs. Every week, we are feeding you God's Word. Every week, we are feeding you the bread of life. Every week, we're feeding you what's going to sustain you for the rest of your life. And this morning, we decided that we're going to go ahead. Not only are we going to feed you the Word, but we're also going to feed your little tummies as well. We're all about catering. We are all about catering to your needs. To you. So we know that some of you guys water. enjoy the donuts, but some of you are like, you know what? Some of them get, get quite grumpy when they don't get a donut. I heard a kid this morning. I heard a kid. I love donuts. Fit. But this morning we're going to serve you restaurant style something other than a donut. Yeah. Does anybody know how to spell hors d'oeuvres? Because I don't. But that's what we're going to serve you this morning. And uh, we want you guys to enjoy. But we are the church. 
the church is the table, and it's our job as your pastors to feed you. How many of you guys came hungry to church this morning? Yeah. Right? So we're going to feed you. So as they're, as they're distributing the food, maybe God will multiply and we'll have enough for the second service. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. See, there's benefits to coming to the first service because, you know, we run out. We run out. Second, second crowd. Yeah, they're done. You know what's amazing, guys? How many of you guys have ever invited somebody over to your house to dinner? Anybody? You know what you do when you invite someone over? How many of you guys have ever invited somebody over and they told you no? Once in a while? Not very often. But not very often. I want to tell you guys, when Brad and I got married, he thought I should be like the queen bee hostess. Okay? okay. I'm not really the queen bee hostess. Not really. I'm more like I can run an event and I can coordinate, but do I want to honestly like throw out all the cool stuff on the table? I can do it. It's not really my superpower, right? Brad goes up to people we didn't even know in college. Didn't even know them. I remember this one guy, he played in a rock band or country band or something local in Joplin. And he comes home to our 600 foot apartment. 600 square feet. Did anybody catch that? 600, 600 square feet. Square feet. What is that? Like the size like, of a stage maybe? Like that was our first home. 16, Brad said, hey, I invited this guy and his girlfriend over to our house for dinner. I said, Do, are we getting a new house? Like what are you talking about? We don't even own a house. We have like an apartment. An electron, electric, you know, plant appliance. I didn't even have. Up. I didn't even have a kitchen. There was no, there was no stove in this apartment. And Brad says, but listen. She's resourceful. But listen, they need Jesus. And I'm going to invite them. I invited them to come over to our house for dinner. So what did I do? But I cleaned my 600 square feet. It didn't feet. take very long. It didn't take that long. I cleaned it all spotless. And then I got into the kitchen. And I can't even remember, remember what I made. But I took every tool I had in my kitchen and I put out a spread. And I took the tiny little table, which you see right here. Yes, boys and girls, this is vintage. That was 15 years ago. <laughs> this is vintage. I set this table, as pretty as I could possibly make it, to host this couple coming over. Mind you, I've never met them in my life, right? But I married Brad. Brad loves people. He can meet you in Walmart if you're coming to our house. And again. I love so, you. So, they come in. And they sat down, and I wanted to make sure everything was perfect. Yeah. Awesome. From the moment they walked in, now back in the day we burned candles, now we have scentsies, right? Get your scentsies, right? But I had the candles burning, and I made sure my table was set. The house smelled good, it was clean, the food looked beautiful, and most of all it tasted really, really good. They came into our home that night, and they had awesome time with us. I don't ever remember if we ever talked to that couple again in our life. But that night, we shared Jesus yes, we did. with that couple. And I bet to this day, never forget they will never, never forget us. A couple who invited them over who didn't even know them. My point is this, guys. Every week, we have an opportunity to invite people to the table. Right. Every week, we have an opportunity to take an invite card and go out and say, hey, if you want to come to my house for dinner, do this this week. Go out with somebody in, in Walmart or in your community and say, do you want to come to my house for dinner? And when they give you a funky look, hand them an invite card and say, hey, my church is serving up something awesome. You can be there Sunday morning, 9.15. Because every week, we take the time, guys, to make sure that we are ready that we're ready for those people that we've invited to right. God's table. You know, we came out of this this last series that, that we came out of, we talked about the Great Commission. You guys remember that? And we talked about how our mission at Mount River Church is to lead people into a real and life-changing relationship with Him that is okay. contagious, right? And so we're kind of bleeding into, or feeding into this new series, right, at the table. And, and we're kind of just, just catching the momentum here, and we're talking about how there's so many people out there that surround you and me each and every day. Listen to me. Each and every day, there are people that you go to work with, people maybe you go to school with, family members, friends, neighbors, that are hungry. They're hungry for happiness. All around 
around you. There are people that are hungry for happiness. You know, I came to a point in my life when uh, I was very young and I was, I was in business and I was doing really good. You know, some great things were happening. I was making good money and I was, I was happy about that. Happy, happy about that. And I really came to a point where I, I thought I had everything that I could have ever wanted in my life. But the fact is, I was still hungry. There was something that wasn't complete. There was something that wasn't filling my life and truly making me happy. I was continually searching and seeking for that fulfillment, for that thing that would fill my hunger, that thing that would quench my thirst. And I just couldn't find it until finally... I realized that my life without Jesus Christ was absolutely hopeless. I realized it wouldn't matter if I had all the money in the world, if I had the biggest house, if I had the nicest car, it would have never mattered because the only thing I realized that truly gives me fulfillment, fills my hunger and makes me full is a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus. See, I came to a point in my life where I came to the table. I attended a local church where I was living, and man, did they serve up the Word of God. Man, it was awesome. And, and my heart, I remember, it was a Wednesday night. I'll never forget this. As long as I live, it was the week of Valentine's Day, and it was 1997. Yeah. I'm old. Like, this I just got some weird looks from the front row. They're like, huh? 1997, Wednesday night. Right? The, the worship band and the, and the team, it was like our Accelerate. And they were, the worship was awesome. And I was back here, kind of like towards the back, in the middle of this crowd of people. And I was just like, I was shaking. Like, like there was goosebumps all over my arms and my body. And I was like, I don't know what the heck is going on right now. But this is really awesome. People around me had their hands in the air. And man, just something. There was like this, these, these lightning bolts of energy. It was just, just, just filling my body. I was like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? What is this that I'm experiencing? It was God's presence. It was the presence of of the one who created heaven and the earth, who put, who put air in my lungs, I realized that I was connecting with my creator. And before I knew it, tears were just streaming down my face. And I, I, I had connected for the really, really connected in a real way with God. And I was blown away. Never, when I, when I pulled a check out of the mail, did I ever feel like that. Never, never when, when, I, when I, I got a, a, a car or a raise or, or whatever you can think of, I never felt that way, the way that I felt when I connected with God that night. Something happened in my life. Something shifted in my world. Something changed me forever. And I became addicted to this thing called Jesus. I became addicted to this food that they were eating. And I was like, man, this is some good growth. I want some more of this. And I realized as I grew in my relationship with Christ that there are so many people around me, even people who think, they think they're at the table. They think, they think they really know the food. But they really have never truly eaten of it. And you know, Mount Rivers Church, our vision, our mission is all about reaching those people who are hungry. I would love to sit here and stare you in the face. Those of you who have been in church for a while and say, man, we do all of this just for you. But that would be a lot. Hold on, let me, let me break in here. How many of you guys were ever caught using paper plates at your own house? Right here. You know what? Who has time to wash dishes? Not I. My daughters would say amen, right? Because they have to do them at our house. Okay, but guess what? If I'm having guests go, what am I going to bring out? The, the best. best I have. <laughs> the best. The best I have. My family, am I going to feed them? Absolutely, I'm going to feed them. But I might throw out some paper plates or some stars on plates. That doesn't mean we talk. don't love our kids. No, but what it means is if I'm having a guest go, if I'm having somebody over that's never been, I'm going to pull out the best. best I'm going to pull out the best. And that's what we do. Week in and week out. We do everything that we do because of the newcomer that walks down our sidewalk right. and then walking. You know, from the moment you pull in and you see crazy guys holding signs and waving and smiling. We're glad you're 
up. These are the men and women, boys and girls, who every week, week in and week out, they're like, hey, I know how to eat, and I'm ready to serve. I know how to feed myself, man. Every day, I open the word, and every day I'm eating it up. But when I walk through those doors, man, put me in chair three, because I'm ready to serve it up. I'm ready to introduce somebody else to Jesus Christ. I'm ready to hold the sign and say, yes, we are so glad you're here. I'm ready to turn some knobs upstairs and write a computer. I'm ready to get on a keyboard and you can play. Right? I'm ready to serve up. Right. Jesus Christ. Right. And there's one more chair that we didn't bring out here this morning, but some of you have these in your house. And it's a high chair. Who of you guys got a high chair in your house? How many of you guys know that people sit in a high chair, they kind of like to throw fits? You ever had a fit? Yeah? You had those babies who are like demanding. Cutest, chubby baby. Cutest, chubby baby. Like, I think he has food left over from like four years ago. There's Kitten. 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 Kitten.
And every week, we want to have a third of our people sitting in chair one, on their way to chair two, and on their way moving to chair three. Because guess what? If you're not growing, you're dying. When it comes to living for God, if you're not growing, you're dying. It's just like a plant and a bunch of you got them today, right? Moms always get flowers on Mother's Day. I buy my mom flowers every single year, painting plants. I just told her. I hope she doesn't see the video first. I've got it at my house. But guess what? If those plants don't continue to be fed, and I'm horrible, I kill everything green. If I don't feed and water those plants, they're going to die. It's just a matter of time. I bought myself some, and they will die. <laughs> you can drive by my house. Brad's trying to keep well, he did the miracle grow. Oh, miracle grow. We thought that one Surely word. this, Lord. But in about a week, we'll forget to water them. We'll forget to feed them. But guess what? We are horrible. We don't we don't lose people, guys. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we feed people. We kill plants, but we don't kill people. That's right. And if you don't want to eat, you'll never grow. And if you don't grow, you're gonna die. Amen. So the question, obviously, this morning is, what chair are you sitting in, right? Are, are you this this uh, unchurched individual? You really, you're really not in it, right? You're one of those people that we're just consistently inviting each and every week to come and eat. Maybe you're that person this morning. You say, Pastor Brad, I am hungry. I am hungry for that satisfaction that you're talking about. That thing that doesn't have anything to do with money or title or status or, or a house or family or, or anything that you think might make you complete. I want that fulfillment. I want the bread of life in my life. And I want heaven as my home. If you're that person this morning, I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a second to come and eat at the table, right? And you're not even going to have to leave your seat. You need to come to Jesus right where you are. You might be in this seat this morning, right? Right? And tell them just for a second. Why do they want to go from here to here? Because we're going to pray with these guys in just a second. We're going to make it, bring it to home. You know what? If our kids, any one of them down here in the front row, they, they join us for first service. If any of your kids ever just stopped growing, you would become concerned. I remember I had a friend who, they had a little girl. And about the age of two, she was still very small for her age. And at the age of four, she was the same size as she was at two. And they started going to doctor and specialist after specialist after specialist because she wasn't growing. It's awesome to be a baby for a season, but there's a time to learn how to put the spoon in your hand and start to eat and to grow and move to the next seat. You don't want to be a baby forever. So this morning, we are challenging you to move from one seat to the next. And, and I just, I, I hope you understand something about this church. Everything that we do goes back to this first chair. We love people, guys. We go out of our way to serve the best of the best of the best each and every week because we love the lost. We love those who don't have that real relationship with Christ. We're going to do everything we can do. We're going to spare no expense to win the lost whatever the cost. But we need you guys, the rest of you, to get here in chair three and say, hey, Pastor, what can I do? Maybe you can hold a sign. Maybe you can, I'm getting into, I'm getting into next week, the week after what it's going to be good. You guys do not want to miss next week and the week after the series is going to be unbelievable. Would you stand up with me this morning? I hope you feel like you've been fed, not just physically, but I hope you feel like you've been fed spiritually. Jesus is the bread of life. Anyone who comes to Him will never hunger and will never thirst again. You might be a hungry or thirsty person in this place. You might know somebody that is hungry or thirsty. I would say to you, come to the table and eat. And then bring as many people as you possibly can to come to the table and eat and be filled. The difference that Christ can make in your life cannot even be put into English words. He is that awesome. You need Him. He loves you. You have to have Jesus. And He is here this morning. He has drawn you to this place by the power of His Holy Spirit to speak to you this morning.
I want to do at this time is I want to invite you. If you'd say, Pastor Brad, I'm hungry. Say, I don't, I don't really have a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus that is contagious. And I want that. I want that real relationship you're talking about. I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, please, in honor of what God wants to do in this place, He is about to change people's lives for eternity. He's about to change your life forever. Never be the same again. This is it. This is your moment. This is your time. This is the moment that you've been waiting for. The best decision you will ever make in your entire life. Come to the table. For those of you that would say this morning, Pastor Brad, I need Jesus. I need that bread. I'm going to count to three. And on the count of three, I want you to raise your hand real high so I can see you. And I'm going to pray with you. We as a church are going to pray with you right where you are this morning. We do this each and every week because this is why we exist. This is our mission. To reach people like you. To change your world forever. Jesus is dreaming big for you. Mountain Rivers Church is dreaming big for you. Ready for life change on the count of three. Here we go. One, two, three. Who are you in this house? You say, I want Jesus. Amen. I see your hand. Amen. I see your hand over there. I see your hand. Anybody else this morning? Amen. Amen. I see your hand in the back. I see your hand in the back. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Come on. One more time. Anybody else? Anybody else? You say, I want Jesus in my life. Never to be the same again. I see your hand. Those of you online that are watching, that goes for you as well. Jesus loves you and he is calling out your name for your life to never be the same again. This is it. We want to pray with you. We want to pray with you now for life change. help at the table. If that's you this morning, I just want you to lift your hands where you are. And those of you who want to say thank you also to all of our volunteers every week, leaders and volunteers, all of you guys that are making a difference, you cannot even imagine how thankful we are for you. We want to pray for you guys this morning that God would use you this week to invite someone to church to make a difference in this house. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now I just pray over each and every one of these who would say, I want to go to the next chair at the table. God, I pray that you would bless them. I pray that you would put a hunger in their heart to serve others. God, I pray that you would put a hunger in their heart to grow at the table in your word and, and in, in uh, communion, Father God, in connection, God, with your people to grow in a relationship. God, we love you. I'm thanking you in advance for the great things that are to come in people's lives in this church. We love you, God. We know that our best days are ahead of you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, Amen, Amen, Amen. Give Jesus a big hand clap of praise. What you hey, thanks so much for joining us today. If you want to be a part of something bigger than yourself, give to our ministry. We've made giving easy here at Mountain Movers Church. If you have your smartphone, just text the number 918-223-8090. Just push in the amount you want to give and push send. It's that easy. If you don't have your smartphone, not a problem. You can mail your giving just as easy to 24,000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma, 74344. Thanks for watching today. Hey, remember, we're dreaming big for you. We'll see you next week.